After the issue has been raised, the next step is to screen for inactivity using our three simple questions. This is known as the Scottish Physical Activity Screening Questionnaire, or SCOT Pass Q for short. Let's take a look at the first question in assessing a patient's level of physical activity. In the past week, how many days have you been physically active for a total of 30 minutes or more? Physical activity can include walking, cycling, gardening, housework, and exercise or sport. Anything that gets the heart rate or breathing rate up a little. Remember, the 30 minutes can be divided into bouts of 10 minutes or more. If your patient is getting over 30 minutes on five days or more, great. Encourage them to keep up the good work. If not, move on to question two. If four days or less, have you been physically active for at least two and a half hours or 150 minutes over the past week? If your patient's physical activity totals two and a half hours or 150 minutes each week, encourage them to keep this up and exit the pathway. Remember, the purpose of the screening tool is to identify those not getting enough activity. So if someone is meeting the guidelines, it's okay to simply offer a sentence or two of positive reinforcement. If your patient's total physical activity is less than 150 minutes, the next step is to ask question three, which determines their readiness to change. Every patient not meeting the guidelines should reach question three of Scott Pass Q. Are you interested in being more physically active? If your patient indicates they are ready to consider increasing their activity levels, there are several options. It may be appropriate to simply highlight the guidelines you've just used during the screening or you could continue on the pathway to deliver brief advice or brief intervention. Let's see some scenarios showing Scott Pass Q screening and assessment in action. The first takes place in a diabetic outpatient clinic. Dr Fiona Green is an endocrine consultant reviewing a patient recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Knowing how important being active is in the management of such patients, she is keen to make use of the physical activity pathway. Susan, earlier on you spoke about your gran who had diabetes and you also mentioned that she'd had some problems with her eyes as a consequence of that. And you mentioned that you didn't like the idea of having to take more tablets for your diabetes. Yes, that's right. I'm not very good with tablets. So one of the things I wanted to do now was maybe to ask you a few questions to look at your lifestyle to see if there's anything that you can do to try and prevent um, progression of your diabetes and reduce the need for tablets. So do you smoke, Susan? No. I smoked one cigarette when I was in school and never again. I suppose that's good enough. And what about alcohol? Do you drink? Oh, hardly ever, Doctor. Maybe a glass of sherry a couple of times a year. OK, that sounds good too. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions about physical activity, because we know that physical activity is a really good way to manage your diabetes. Right, OK. Susan, on a typical week, how many days do you think you're physically active for more than 30 minutes? One or two. And if you were to add up those one or two episodes, do you think you're active for more than two and a half hours? No, probably not. I don't do that much, really. Are you interested in being more active, Susan? Oh, yes, I suppose so, Doctor, but I really wouldn't know where to start. Don't worry about that. That's sometimes difficult to get started, but we can help you with that. It's really great to hear that you're interested in becoming more physically active. It will help to reduce the number of tablets that you need to take and also help to reduce the complications that we spoke about earlier. Would you be interested in seeing Sally, who's our dietitian? She can help you look at your exercise and look at the barriers to putting in place the exercise. All right, that would be really good, but do I have to make another appointment? No, no, Sally just works down the corridor. I can ask her if she can see you today, if you like. OK. By initiating the pathway, Dr Green has raised the important issue of physical activity and discovered that Susan could benefit from doing more. Involving other members of the diabetic team allows Dr Green to respond to the early motivation to change displayed by her patient. We'll come back later and see how Susan gets on. Let's now take a look at some other possible outcomes from the screening process. The next scenario takes place in a pre-operative assessment clinic, an ideal setting to ask patients about their physical activity levels. If it's okay with you, I'd like to ask a few questions about your physical activity levels. Yes, that would be okay. In a typical week, how often do you exercise for 30 minutes or more? Well, I take the dog out for long walks every second day. 
play golf once a week, so say four days. Okay, and over those four days, are you exercising for more than two and a half hours? Yes, uh, the golf takes around three hours, walking the dog another couple over the week. That's good you're doing that. I'm keeping it up for 30 minutes, five days a week will help to keep you fit and healthy. And continuing to do that will help reduce the chance of conditions such as heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's and colon cancer. I didn't know that. That's, that's good to hear. I'll need to take my wife out and more walks with me. So it's clear that even those who are active can benefit from being assessed. By hearing from his nurse in advance of his operation that an active lifestyle is beneficial for his health, the patient is more likely to keep it up and may even share this message with others. But not every patient will be able or willing to consider changes to their activity levels at that particular time, and that's okay. But without asking the questions, there's no way to know which patients are ready for positive change. Here's the sort of situation you might encounter. Uh, now you're feeling a bit better, Tony, and we're getting your way home, uh, we should probably have a chat about your physical activity levels and how that can help your blood pressure control. Would that be all right? Yeah, that's fine, but I didn't know that, though. We'll go through a couple of questions uh, to see if you're doing enough exercise just now. So in a typical week, how many days would you be physically active for a total of, of 30 minutes or more? I'll do a wee bit of gardening if that counts. Um, so, probably two days. Yes, gardening can be a good exercise. So would you say you get at least two and a half hours eh, on, of activity over an average week doing that? No, if I'm honest, it's probably about an hour. That's quite good that you're already getting your hour eh, of exercise in a week. But to be honest, would you be interested in doing a wee bit more, do you think? Because two and a half hours is the recommended guidelines for physical activity. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, what with work and my wife not being very well at the moment, I don't, don't really get that much time. That's understandable, Tony. You've obviously got quite a lot on your mind just now. It might be something to think about in the future, though, because increasing your physical activity can help your health and well-being quite substantially. But we'll leave it just now. Yeah, it's something you certainly look at later on when things calm down a bit. Um... Although this wasn't the right time for Tony to make some changes, the assessment process is still a critical part of this healthcare contact. It's the first time he's been made aware of the important link between his health and his activity levels and may be the trigger for positive change in the future. If a patient isn't ready or doesn't feel confident enough to become more physically active when you see them, simply highlight the national guidelines and remind them that any activity is better than nothing. Whether young or old, in whatever shape or size, almost every patient should be assessed as they could all benefit from getting more active. You'll find that some will be meeting the guidelines whilst others might be quite far off. Some patients will be interested in becoming more active, whereas others may not feel quite ready. Some situations may not lend themselves to asking about physical activity, such as severe ill health, but trust your own professional judgement here. Every patient is different and unique. What is important is that they're given the correct information in order to make an informed choice regarding what is important for their own health. With 2,500 Scots dying prematurely every year because of inactivity, assessing a patient's physical activity levels should become as much a part of your day-to-day -day clinical practice as asking about smoking and alcohol habits. Using the Scott Pass-Q questions will make this much easier.